Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to give a talk here. The title of my talk is Microfide and Phosphorus Dynamics in Shallow Lakes from Physiological Demands to Ecosystem Functioning. In this talk, I will focus on five sections. In fact, the formal four sections are mainly summarize briefly the current knowledge about microfide and phosphorus relationships. In the last section, I want to propose a hypothesis describing the micro effect on phosphorus cycle at a watershed scale. The first, let me describe the phosphorus environment for microfide life. Phosphorus is an important element in the lake ecosystems. In natural lakes, phosphorus have a lot of different forms. Some forms are easily utilized by biotas. Others are difficult to be used. These are mainly in the sediment. Microfide is also the necessary element for normal life. In lakes, most of the phosphorus is in the sediment, where anoxial conditions are frequently occurs. Microfite still need phosphorus for their normal life. Many microfite, especially submerged microfite, usually have very small roots. But the direct phosphorus absorption through their root system has been demonstrated by several classical experiments. The phosphorus absorption through root system is a simple physiological processes satisfy microfite normal life. However, this absorption usually brings complex consequences, mainly because of the important structuring roles of microfide in shallow lake ecosystems. In these ecosystems, microfide usually have complex relationships with other biotas, especially their microbase. As we know, in natural lakes, there are many physical, chemical, and biological factors affect phosphorus dynamics, such as resuspension, bioturbulation, diffusion, etc. It seems macrophytes are involved in all these processes. Here is an example. Almost 20 years ago, Stephen studied the release of phosphorus for sediment, he found macrophyte can increase the phosphorus release from sediment. However, because of the oxidation consequences of sediment by macrophyte, such as isoetase, the phosphorus availability decreased. Phosphorus mobilization by macrophyte has been demonstrated. Now, this result has become the base of using macrophyte to treat in contaminated soils or in constructed wetland. Here we can have an, uh, another case studies. This work was done by Dr. Li in as we know, Dianchi is now the most famous but also hypertrophic lakes in China. Many contaminated sloughs are dredged out for treating the eutrophication problems in this lake. These sludges are deposited at the lake shore. How to deal with this? kind of contaminated sludges remains a big challenge for local government. Dr. Lee's work 
want to use emergent macrophyte to treat these contaminated sludges. This slide shows some results of his work. From his work, we can find these three emergent plants can reduce the total phosphorus contents in the sediment significantly compared with the control. According to the biomass and the total phosphorus content, these three emergent plants can retain a great amount of total phosphorus, mainly mobilized from the contaminated soil. Of course, macrophyte can mobilize the phosphorus from the sediment, but usually macrophyte also show a clear life cycle. How about the phosphorus budget during the whole growing season or a whole year? This slide shows the annual fluctuations of total phosphorus, total nitrogen, and the total carbon in two natural communities. This work was done in the shallow lakes along the Yangtze River. The slide shows the relative proportions of total carbon, total nitrogen, and total phosphorus among the microbite, surface sediment, and the water column. From these studies, we can clearly know that the sediment phosphorus always the largest phosphorus pores, about 80% or more than 80% of phosphorus are retained in the sediment. Microphyte is the second largest phosphorus pore in the natural systems. Where phosphorus containing in the water columns is very few proportions. However, when we look at the total carbons in the sediment and the microphyte, it seems they're quite close because of the importance of total carbons in microbes activities. Maybe the total carbon is a important resources for microbes activities. This slide shows the turnover of total carbon, total nitrogen, and total phosphorus in Valley's area community. In the green season, Valley's area mobilized most of its total phosphorus from the sediment, quite a few just directly from the water column. But during the decaying season, many of the phosphorus released to the environment, many returned to the surface sediment. In the formal sections, we have summarized briefly the current technologies about the macrophyte effect on phosphorus dynamics. Here, in this section, I want to propose a hypothesis to describe the macrophyte effect on phosphorus cycle in a watershed scale. I'm working in Wuhan, a large city near the Yangtze River, where I do my researches and also familiar ways. So I use the Yangtze River floodplain as the example. Before I propose the hypothesis, the general background I want to mention is that the Yangtze River floodplain is the largest one in China, containing numerous shallow lakes. This place is usually called middle lower reaches of the Yangtze River shallow lake groups. Naturally, all these groups are connected with the Yangtze River system and almost all covered by microphyte in their whole basin. This phenomenon can be found in many researches carried out before 1980s. However, from 1950s, more and more dams and dikes had been built in these lakes to control the frequently flooding. So now many lakes in this area had been separated from the river system. From 1980s, more and more lakes in this area has become rapidly and seriously eutrophication. Necrophyte decline is very, very obvious. 
of course, eutrophication is the result of the rapid economic development. More and more untreated wastewater are discharged to these lakes. Here, the hypothesis I just uh, want to describe the possible effect of macrophytes in the eutrophication processes. From the former sections, we know macrophytes are active players in phosphorus cycle. According to the alternative stable state theory, lakes with abundant macrophytes may maintain clear state for quite a long time. However, if we compare the phosphorus in the sediment, the minerals in mine, we can suggest that the phosphorus retained by macrophyte communities as the preliminary treated element in the storehouse, although quite stable, still more relatively active compared with the phosphorus in the sediment, especially when we considering the continuous total carbon accumulating from the macrophyte biomass. We think total carbon accumulation might stimulate activities of microbes. In the macrophyte communities, more and more relatively active phosphorus resources at least can stimulate epiphyte development. That means more shading effects on macrophyte. So the active participation of macrophyte in phosphorus cycle is suggested to make an environment unsuitable for their future survival. This phenomenon we think is quite similar to the fate of pioneer species in succession series. If we look at the Yangtze River flood plain, naturally the frequent water exchange between lakes and rivers allows phosphorus mobilized by macrophyte from the sediment can be exported to a river systems and finally to the sea. This process may decrease phosphorus accumulation in lakes. But the dam building interrupts the natural phosphorus export process, stimulating the eutrophication process. In this hypothesis, the interaction between microphyte and the phosphorus dynamics involves many other biotas especially the microbase. Now, most of the research is uh, on macrophytes and uh, microbase are usually independent. We think the combined research is about the macrophyte and the microbase may provide us more knowledge about the effect of macrophytes on phosphorus dynamics in lakes. Here is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Here I want to express my thanks to Dr. Stephen Mabley and uh, Martin Sondergaard for their kind and uh, help in preparing the talks. Thank you.